I'm Jenny. And we are here to guide you through the world of epigenetics. Okay, let's start off with the basics to refresh your memory. Our DNA contains the blueprint essential for the synthesis of biopolymers. The process of replication will unwind the superhelix, unwind the double-stranded DNA helix, and replicate the master template using DNA polymerase. Ooh! Is that to ensure that the cycle can repeat over generations? Yes! Now, back to the topic. Transcription is the process by which the information contained in a section of DNA is transferred to a newly assembled piece of messenger RNA, mRNA. It is facilitated by RNA polymerase and transcription factors. Eventually, this mature mRNA finds its way to a ribosome where it is translated into proteins and will manifest in the organism as its phenotype. Wow! It's so amazing how the teeny weeny DNA ends up determining a person's phenotype. Wait, that story doesn't end there. Yeah, I know. There's this thing they call epigenetics. The term epigenetics refers to changes in phenotype or gene expression caused by mechanisms other than changes in the underlying DNA sequence. Hence the name epi, which is Greek for over and above, genetics. These changes may remain through cell divisions for the remainder of the cell's life and may also last for multiple generations. However, there is no change in the underlying DNA sequence of the organism. Instead, non-genetic factors cause the organism's genes to behave or express themselves differently. In modern scientific discourse, Epigenetics refers to heritable traits that do not involve changes in the underlying DNA sequence. Parallel to genetics, terms like epigenome and epigenetic code are used. I have an idea for us to further appreciate epigenetics. Let's take the example of identical twins. Monozygotic twins who virtually have the same genes could wind up being so different. One twin could be predisposed to cancer or diabetes or hypertension while the other one is perfectly normal because twins growing up in the same household share environmental influences epigenetics could be the source of variability the big question now is how did this happen several theories are proposed however we will only concentrate on two main mechanisms Histone modification and DNA methylation. Hmm, histones. Ah, histones are proteins that package and order the DNA into structural units called nucleosomes. They play a huge role in gene regulation. You're right. Sometimes, histones could undergo post-translational modifications, which could change the shape of the histone sphere. DNA is not completely ruined during replication. It is also possible that the modified histones can be carried into each copy of DNA. By altering the shape of the histones around it, these modified histones would ensure that the differentiated cell would stay differentiated and not convert back into being a stem cell. Ooh, so that's a story of histone modification. Now, how about we discuss the more popular mechanism of epigenetics? DNA methylation. CPG sites are regions of DNA where a cytosine nucleotide occurs next to a guanidine nucleotide linked by a phosphate group. Thus, it is a shorthand for cytosine phosphate guanidine. Addition of methyl groups to these sites will convert cytosine to 5-methyl cytosine. However, some areas of genome are methylated heavier than others, and highly methylated areas tend to be transcriptionally less active. Through a mechanism not fully understood, methylation of cytosines can also persist from the germline of one of the parents into the zygote, marking the chromosome as being inherited from this parent.